Hi, this is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. This set of videos is gonna show you how to deliver an online class for free using Skype. Doesn't matter whether you're teaching languages or geography or history or economics, this will be really relevant to you. I'm gonna show you all the key features that we can use in Skype to really make an engaging lesson. Now, my previous video, which is still up on YouTube, has had many thousand plays, and I've actually been both receiving classes with Skype and delivering classes with Skype for about eight or nine years now. Um, so it's a great tool, and I found it very, very effective. This course is going to be broken up into two parts because in reality, to deliver really effective online learning, you're going to need two things, Skype and Edmodel. Skype for your live classes, that is the, when you're delivering your lectures and your ideas and you're, perhaps if you're in the language class doing language practice, etc. So that's the interactive element. Uh, but then you need a model where you can share your files, where you can set exercises for the students to do at home, where you can send them links to extra content. So if you're delivering a course, you really need those two parts. So this first part is going to focus on Skype, and the second part is going to look at how we can integrate Skype and Edmodel. Let's get started. So just really quickly, what am I going to teach you? Well, I'm going to teach you the basic settings for Skype. I'm going to show you how to add context. I'm going to sh show you how to message uh, your students. I'm going to show you how to call them. I'm going to show you how you can share files with your students, whether it be PowerPoint slides or Word slides or pictures, etc. And then most importantly of all, I'm going to show you how to screen share. Being able to share your screen so that anything that you've got on your screen, like any pictures that you've got or any documents that you want the students to look at together, you can then do that. So that's the things that I'm going to cover in this first video. Let's get started. Okay, so off we go. I, starting from the point that you've downloaded Skype, uh, you might not have any groups or anything, so you or any any contacts. Uh, this is what I've done. I've just created a new account for myself. Obviously, I'll be connecting to a different account in a minute so that we can see how you make a call, etc. But basically, I've come on here, and the first thing is, of course, you're going to want to add contacts. You're going to want to contact your students, or they're going to contact you either way. So what you're going to need to do is click on this button here, which is contact. And if you begin to write name, so I'm actually going to look for myself on another account that I've got. So I'm just going to put 19551955, and hopefully I will see here uh, my other account. And what I can do is I can click on the add button, and that will be the quickest way to get a student to join your group because then they can just open up their Skype, they'll see that they've had an invitation and they simply accept it. So that is the easiest way to add people to your screen and I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna click on add, okay, so that that person is gonna be added to my list. Now I can see that person here on the left hand side. Now they're actually joined my list of contacts, my first contact. It would be interesting, wouldn't it, to see what the other person sees. So I'm going to show you that now. So clicking on his name, I'm going to just click here and say hi uh, so that I've actually said hi to Russell. So now I'm logged on to the other account. I've got another computer open and you can see on here that I can see that Russell has said hello to me. That is the other Russell, okay? So this is Russell Handout, the other one is Russell Stannard. And I then simply click here and accept. So that is how you would invite students. And this is exactly what they would see if you um, just simply uh, try to connect to them and then said hi, uh, that I can either accept or block this. So I'm gonna accept it. And when I accept that, then I get the chance to message back and notice now that Russell is going to become part, or Russell, uh, this other Russell here, is going to become part of my uh, directory. In other words, I will be able to contact Russell Stannard and to be able to reply to him and to answer his calls, etc. So what I'm going to do now is just send a quick message back. So I'm just going to say, hi, this is Russell Stannard. So I'm sending a message. And if we come back now to the other account. Okay, so I can see now that uh, Russell Stannard has sent me a message and I'm gonna send a message back from my account saying, hi, this is Russell 
handout. So you can see now how easily you can communicate with students and notice of course that we're not actually at the moment we're not actually even in a call we've just simply connected to each other and we're able to actually communicate so often I do that at the beginning of a lesson or when I'm receiving lessons the teacher will simply message me saying right Russell are you ready and then we're ready for a call so now we're actually in contact and of course at the moment we've not even made a phone call uh, to each other we're just simply um, contacting each other via the chat um, which is very easy to do even without actually phoning and if I was to click on my contacts now I will see that Russell Stannard that's the other person we are Russell Handout you can see who you are up here on the left hand side uh, Russell Stannard uh, is in my list now of contacts and as I add more and more people they will always be there. Now to phone Russell when I've got two choices I'm either going to phone him using audio or I'm going to phone him using video then I'm going to need to click on this button here. Okay I've just turned my webcam off on a minute because I just want to highlight a couple of very quick things. Once you've obviously created an account one of the important things you're going to need to do is click here click on settings and make sure by coming down to audio and video that you've got your right webcam so I've got my webcam here set up okay and I obviously chose it from my list of uh, webcams here and the same with uh, your microphone so in this case I've got various microphones and I've obviously chosen the webcam microphone so those two settings are really important okay and you can even um, uh, just check that you can hear yourself by doing an audio test as well make sure that your speakers are connected so just to point out where that is really important here settings and then you're coming down to audio and video because obviously if you're doing a class you're definitely going to want to be able to do those two things so let's call our student let's call Russell and to do that we need to click on this button here uh, video call we're making a video call so we click on that and hopefully we'll hear this sound now I'm going to stop it for a minute and that way when that sound rings we're just waiting then for the other student to answer. Now I'm going to do it again and this time I am going to answer it on the other account. I'm going to turn my webcam off for the next part because uh, there'll be a lot of use of webcams actually in the video anyway. Okay so let's make the call again. Uh, so we're going to click again on video and what will normally happen is that you'll be connected and you can see me on the screen now let's have a quick look at what the other person is experiencing why this call is going on okay so it shows me that there's an incoming call and I've got the choice here of either declining the call receiving it just as uh, audio or receiving it as actually seeing the person now I'm going to click on this Okay, so what you can see in the top corner is yourself. In other words, the part person that's answered this call. Because obviously in this case now, I'm the student and you can see me there shaking my hands. What I will be able to see on the screen is my teacher. Okay, so I'm back as the teacher here. You can see me up in the corner here. And this would be where your student is. Okay, obviously they're not on the screen at the moment. But that's where they would be and you would be able to talk to them, etc. Now, one of the things that you may want to do is that you're going to want to share things. So if you click on open conversation, that's going to open up this area here. And that allows you to carry on talking to your students so you can message each other. OK, and the student obviously can reply to you. But more importantly, you can share files. Now, you might be doing a presentation and you at the same time want to share a file for the student to open. So if you notice, if you click here, you've got here various options okay and one of them is add file so if I want to add a picture or a piece of content that I want my student to see and I'm going to do an example so I'm going to click on here and just share this map okay so I'm adding that map and uh, I'm just going to write here is the map so one thing that we can do is immediately we can share files. Now the student then will be able to click on that file and open it. Perhaps you want them to describe the map or something like that. So really, really good way. And when you work with this option, make sure that you realize that you can 
share lots of different things. It could be a PDF document, a PowerPoint slide, etc. So often in the middle of my Polish classes, for example, my teacher will be sharing different documents with me that she wants me to open up and then we're going to be talking about them in the lesson. Okay, so that's really, really important. Now the other super important button, okay, apart from that button, and I'm just going to close that one down for a minute. So that's how you basically open and close the conversation. There's another really important button and that is the ability to share the screen. Okay, without a doubt, the most important thing when you're doing teaching online is the ability to share your screen. You might want to share an image, you might want to share a document, share a PowerPoint, you might want to talk through a PowerPoint slide. And in fact, that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to show you now, I will repeat a couple of times to make it really clear because whenever I train teachers to do this, I must admit they really do struggle with the idea. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go full screen. So I'm going to open up full screen. Remember, I can see myself here. That's me. I'm the teacher. And this is my student who I will be able to see on the screen and I'll be able to hear them. And I'm going to say to them, right, I'm going to share my screen with you. And I would click down here. Now, in my case, I've got two displays, but I'm going to use the display that's in front of us, the one that we're looking at. So ignore this one. Click on that and then click on share screen. You won't have this option. You'll just see one screen and then you click share screen. Now, from that moment, the student can see whatever I can see. So at the moment, I can see them. So they're going to see themselves, okay, through your computer. But as soon as you minimize, so you click there, now the student can see this screen. And if I click here, and open up a PowerPoint slide and start to talk through it, then the student can see everything that's on my screen, okay? Now, what about when I want to stop? Well, I would then click on this button here and open up the, the uh, Skype again and just simply click on uh, this button here and say stop sharing, and that's all over. Now I'm going to repeat that and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to record what the student sees so that you can actually understand that. Hi, just a super quick reminder because I know you're in the middle of a video. If you like the video, if you're finding it useful, please comment on it, please share it, please like it and more importantly perhaps please subscribe to the channel and that way you'll keep up with all the latest videos I've uploaded. Click on the bell as well and that way you'll be warned when a new video has been uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Let's get back to the video now. So I'm now going to repeat that whole process and then show you a video that shows you what the students saw so you can really understand what's happening. So I'm going to click again on the share button. I'm obviously going to choose this computer screen in front of us. You won't have this option in most cases because most of you would be just using one computer screen and then all you do is click on that button there. Now the student can see everything that you can see. Now at the moment obviously what you can see is because you're on a phone call with them is that you can see them. So you minimize that screen. Now they can see your PowerPoint presentation and they can see you flicking through the PowerPoint. And if you was to close down the PowerPoint and open something else up, they would see that. Whatever you do now on the screen will appear on their screen. Now to stop it happening, you come down to the bottom here, open up uh, the bring up the, the, the Skype screen again, because remember you minimized it, so you're bringing it up again. Click on this button here and click on stop. And that is done. Now what I'm gonna show you is how did that look for the student? So what we can see on the screen now is the teacher and the teacher is showing me PowerPoint slides and going through them and I can see everything, I can see their cursor, everything. But don't forget I'm now a student, I'm looking at what the teacher is sharing to me and I can see exactly what they're doing on the screen. Okay, hope that was useful. I uh, hope you've really got a clear idea now of how you can deliver online and how you can screen share. Now obviously Skype's brilliant for the live session, but what are the students going to do about homework if you want them to watch a video at home and then answer some questions in a quiz or perhaps do an assignment or perhaps you want to share some folders with them with content in. You really need Edmodel. The combination of Skype and Edmodel is really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you started with Edmodel now and also provide you with some links to continue your studies. You should also see a link now on the screen where you can click and find out about uh, Edmodel and Skype, but also I've put it in the description below if you're accessing this on uh, YouTube. Let's get into the second part.